for our summer school this morning, we're going to have a presentation from Pastor Stula. Um, I'm giving him 40 minutes. Um, he will engage you. You will be able to ask questions. Um, he is our chaplain. Um, and he is our guide. Kena uh, Waromanya. Um, so for the next 40 minutes, you'll be listening to the voice of Pastor Stula. Um, let's give him, give him an ear and let's engage. And yes, Muruti, um, what song should we do? 148. Him 148. Uh, Chair, please come. Him 148. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go to. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below. Anywhere without him there is doors would fail. Jesus, I am not afraid. Oh, anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus, I can say, flee, go. Oh, anywhere with Jesus, I am not alone. Other friends may fail me, he is still my own. Though his hand may lead me over dreary ways, anywhere with Jesus is a house of praise. Oh, anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Oh, anywhere with Jesus I can say, go. Oh, anywhere with Jesus I can go to see When the gloomy shadows round about me creep Oh, knowing I shall wake and never more to roll Anywhere with Jesus shall be whole sweet oh, Good morning. Good morning, Stasa. How are you today? 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 Yes, I've been requested to present. Uh, you know, when you are asked, uh, please prepare something with what? But you are a pastor. Empower the church. So, yes, um, for this past uh, three, three to four months, I've been studying something that I want us to share. Uh, to share together. Amen? Yes, I want us to talk about it and not only talk about it, know and do something about it. I'll sit together. Yeah. We, let's go to the book of uh, Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Those who are kind enough to allow their Bibles to accompany them to church.
Oh, where, where I'm coming from, when you are there, you say amen. Are you there? Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Are you there? Yes. We are going to talk about that whole chapter. Uh, God speak with Moses. He says, I want to give you, Moses, a calendar of my events or of the events. And as I'm giving you this calendar of the plan of redemption, these are the types. Ne? Are we following? Do you know what are the types? The types and the anti-types. Let me see those who know. Haibo. Types. Type and anti-type. Is it the first time you hear about these two words? But I'm saying that, let me see those who know. I see Elder Bukhatu. I see Elder uh, Dodovu down here. Then the rest, is it a new thing? Okay. Yes. God speaks with Moses and says, these are the feasts of the Lord. Out together. And he enumerates eight of them. Do you see them? Eight of them, but the first one is not an annual feast, but it's a weekly feast, which is the Sabbath. Are we following? Amen. We are going to talk about. So he talks about the feasts of the Lord. Some they are calling the feasts of Israel. As he speaks about this, there are eight. But in this eight, one, it's a weekly feast or festival. Then the rest are annual festival. The, the, the seven. I will see together. That's the one I want to talk about because... You know about the Sabbath, don't it? You know about the Sabbath? And uh, you are here because you understand the Sabbath. But I want us to talk about these feasts of Israel that are numerated in Leviticus 23. There are seven in number. The first feast is Passover. After the Passover feast is followed by the Feast of Unleavened Bread, after the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the Feast of the First Fruits. After the Feast of the First Fruits is the Feast of the Trumpets. After the Feast of the Trumpet is the, is the uh, uh, what else? Feast of the Weeks. After the Feast of the Weeks is the Feast of the Trumpet. The last one is the Feast of the Booth or of In Gathering. Did you get the sequence? We'll start again. The first feast, Passover. Let's leave the Sabbath. Concentrate on the, the seven, this seven, because that's where we are. The first one is the Passover. The second one is unleavened bread. The third one is the first fruits. The fourth one is the Feast of the Weeks. The fifth one is the Feast of the Trumpets. The sixth one is the, the Atonement. The last one is the Feast of the Booth or of In Gathering. You got them. So when you study about these seven feasts, that's where you find the calendar of God in terms of redemption. He gave it to the Israelites as a road map up until the end of time. We need to decode this so that we understand the plan of salvation. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching, eh? Yes. I'm just doing 
an introduction so that we understand this. And I'm just, this is an appetizer so that when you go home, go and do a deeper study. I was still together. But you stop me. And these feasts were divided into two. Hello? They're divided into what? Two. These seven feasts were divided into two. The first four, they, are, they, they were occurring on the first six months of the year and the last three, the last six months of the year. That's how they were what? They were divided. They will start around the, the spring. These four, they happen around spring up until summer. And the other one will happen as the year is ending. Are you following? So he gave them these so that they can know the roadmap. You know, as I was reading, I said, but God is good. As I was studying this, I realized that God is good. And if we are not saved, it will be for your own doing. If you don't go to heaven, you will have caused it to yourself. Let's start with the first feast. What is it called? What is it called? What is a Passover? What do you understand by Passover? It's not a sermon. Passover. Any hands? Passover. Pasek. Pasek. Let's talk. Let's talk. My elder, I see you. You are in trouble. Let's go. Pass over. Open, open for them, you know, as an elder. Pass over. What do you understand by pass over? Yeah. Happy Sabbath. Uh, greetings to everyone. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pass over. Mm -hmm. when, when, when the angel of death was about to and the, the word came to the children of Israel that you need to smear the blood on the door posts so that when the angel of death comes, then when he sees the blood, then he passes over, then your firstborn will be saved. Amen. But the Egyptian sons, unfortunately, when the angel of death came, they were, there was no blood on the door posts and the frames of the door. Therefore, their sons, their firstborns, were killed. Yeah. But those ones of Israel, because of the blood, then the angel of God passed over. And therefore, they were saved. And that's why they had to communicate this day, as they remember what the Lord has done. So it is important for us also to remember. Some will say even the tent meeting actually started there. But that's another talk for another day. Yeah. It's just a. They, they, they throw in pastor. Just say, yeah, I did not go deep. Just say, just say. No, you scratch the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the Passover, the first time Passover is instituted, it was, you go and read about it in Exodus chapter number 12. Exodus chapter number 12, the first time we see the word Passover or the word Passover is introduced in the Bible. Hello? I will follow it. Like Elder Sutuga said, on the Passover, just before the last plague in Israel, in, in Egypt, before God can take them out of Egypt to the promised land, they were hit by how many plagues, by the way? How many? Ten plagues. So the last plague was the death of the firstborn either animal or human beings. I'll see together. Then God says, Israel, the, to survive, please slaughter a lamb, a lamb, a year old, without blemish. Don't break the bones. Roast it 
whole acids, eat it with bitter herbs, and as you slaughter it, the blood, you put it on the doorpost and on the lentils of the door. I was still, I was following. Then when the angel of death comes, as Dr. Stowe said, when it sees the blood, it will what? It will pass over. So since from their departure in Israel on that night, until they enter Canaan, and during the time of Jesus, they've been celebrating the Passover. Hello? But let me say this, maybe of you, some of you did not know. But during the 40 years in the wilderness, they never celebrated the Passover. Did you know that? After Joshua takes over, God says to Joshua, circumcise all the children of Israel. After you have circumcised them, let them eat the Passover. Hello? So, the Passover feast celebration is for those who have a covenant with God. Hello? So, that's why they had to, but, to be circumcised. Why? Because as they were leaving Egypt, there were a mixed multitude. There were other Egyptians. When they saw the Exodus, they got excited and they just followed, not knowing where they are going. Hallelujah. If it's on some other time, I'll talk about the mixed multitude problem. The greatest problem that happened to the Israelites on the way was because of the mixed multitude. Those were not Israel, but Egyptian followed Israel. By a papa, by a zinto. Gandhi, they became a problem to Israel. Okay, that's the Passover. I was still together. So they celebrated it. And when Jesus was on earth, he celebrated the Passover. The first Passover that Jesus attended, you read it about it in Luke chapter 2. Remember when they forgot him. Remember when they forgot Je baby Jesus behind for three days. That was the first Passover that Jesus attended. I was still together. Then the last Passover that Jesus attended is just before they crucify him. That was the last one. Hello? Are you following? So, the Passover celebration ended when Jesus died on the cross. So, it is a type. Jesus becomes a what? An anti-type. Are you following? So, in other words, when you read, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 7, it will say that Jesus became a Passover lamb. Hallelujah. Remember the lamb in Egypt? A year old? Without blemish, you should not break the, the bones. It must be eaten hurriedly. Remember? So, when Jesus was dying on the cross, in the evening before the Sabbath starts, they see that the bodies are on the cross. And the Sabbath should not uh, come while their bodies hanging on the cross. They went to check. They went to cut them to check whether they are alive. The other two thieves, they found them alive. They cut their legs so that they bleed to death. But when they arrived to Jesus, they could not break his bones because he was dead already. Hello? Why? He was a Passover lamb. There was not supposed to be bone that is broken, but only blood shed. So, the Passover festival reached its end when Jesus died on the cross. Hello? Are you following? So, so that's why when you read uh, Ellen White, when she explained 
in the book of age, he says, on that day, because on that night was a Passover night, when, when they were supposed to slaughter a lamb for Passover. In other way, that lamb escaped. <laughs> they could not kill that lamb because the lamb of God was on the cross. So there was no need to slaughter a lamb to celebrate the Passover because Christ became the Passover. Are you following? So, we don't celebrate Passover. Oh, those who claim that they are by a pass again. I always ask them a question. Do you slaughter a lamb? <laughs> Do we eat bitter herbs? What's that? It, no, but you're saying you're celebrating the Passover. You cannot celebrate the Passover and not do what the Bible has prescribed to celebrate the Passover. Are we following? So the Passover ended. Ce celebration of the Passover ended when Christ died on the cross. You get it? So the first feast reached its expiry date when Christ died where? On the cross. So it's no longer significant to celebrate the Passover because Christ became the what? The Passover lamb. I'm done. In a plastic. Let's go to the second feast. What's the second feast? What's the second feast? The feast of the what? Unleaving bread. The feast of unleaving bread Actually, the, the, the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the first fruits, they are combined together. Are you following? They are combined together, or they happen at the same time. When Christ was in the grave, his body did not rot, he did not decompose. Remember, Friday they wanted to embalm him. But because the Sabbath was about to begin, they could not go. But now Christ rests in the grave on Sabbath. Friday night, Sabbath, and morning on Sunday, he resurrected. Follow me. So Christ becomes the unleavened bread. What is unleavened bread? Unleavened bread is the bread without yeast. Remember, yeast makes the bread to what? To rise. That's why Christ says, uh, even the lesson it was talking about, when, when there's a living, living works silently. You can't see it in the flower, but you see the results of the yeast. So when Christ was in the grave, he was unleavened bread, the bread that did not rot. Unleavened bread is a bread that can last. So he became the unleavened bread when he was in the grave. He did not decompose. He did not rot. He remained as he is. That bread that never got stayed. I was still together. So Christ became the Passover lamb. He became the bread without living because he was thus without sin. Remember, he was without what? Sin. So Christ in the grave, he was unliving bread. Hello? Let's move quickly. Then on Sunday morning, he resurrects. He becomes the first fruit of the living. Do you see the feast? He's a Passover. He's a bread as he resurrects. He became the first fruit of the dead. So the feast of the Passover, the feast of the unleavened bread, and the feast of first fruit, they were fulfilled in Christ. Fulfillment of those feasts happened in Christ. That was the end of those fruit, of those feasts when Christ was on the cross. Are you still together? Stop me if you don't understand. Ne? If you want some clarity again. Are we following? So what is the first feast? The Passover. Followed by what? The feast of what? 
unleavened bread, and what else? First fruit. Okay. Let me explain the first fruit. The first fruit, as the Israelites are going to celebrate in the ancient before Christ, they will, the, the fields will be ripe. I was still together. But not ready for harvest. I was still together. As they are moving from different places of abode, going to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast, the, the, the fields will be white, but not ready for harvest. But the priest will harvest some few that are ripe. We call them what? The first fruit. Not all the fields will be ripe, but a few will be. They will, they will just harvest it. After they harvest it, they take them to the sanctuary or the tabernacle and wave it. Wave it by the curtain there that divides the holy place and the most holy place. They wave it to God and say, God, we are thankful. This is a gift we are giving to you of the harvest that you are anticipating. Hello? So, Christ now becomes a first fruit of the dead. Hello? I was you together. So, after the first fruit, we are going to the feast. What do you call it? The feast of what? Weeks. The feast of what? And God says, when he explains it, from the first fruit, you shall count seven weeks. That's why it's called the feast of what? Weeks. You count how many? Seven weeks. And they give you how much? Seven by seven. Forty-nine. Yes. Forty-nine. But it will be, it will forty-nine, and the fiftieth day then is the feast of what? Of weeks. Why 50? God said, from when you finish the first fruit feast, you count seven weeks, it will give you 50. On the 50th, then you celebrate. And that week it was done, they will come and celebrate and bring the harvest, the whole harvest, and celebrate. But now, the question is, this is the type what is the antitype? Hallelujah. We go to the book of Acts, chapter 1 and 2. Go, Jesus, as he ascends, he says, go and stay where? In Jerusalem. And wait for the what? For the promise. So, when the Holy Spirit descended in the book of Acts, it was exactly 50 days after the first fruit. It was not a coincidence. It was not coincidence. It was supposed to happen on that day that, because it was a day of celebrating the, the, the feast of the weeks. So as they were supposed, because Christ has died, it's no longer important, then on that day, the Holy Spirit descended. So that's why it's called the Pentecost. Pentecost is a Greek word that means 50. So it happened right 50 days after the feast of the, 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 the first fruits. I will follow it. So all this event, this was the calendar of God, what shall happen up until the second coming. You cannot miss it. That's why when you read Galatians 4 verse 4, it will say, at the right time Christ came. I was still together. At the what? At the right time, Christ did what? Came. Why? We go back to the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Until 2000, chapter 8, until 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. But in chapter 9, as he explained, the 70 weeks, it, 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 it gives us information when will Christ die. It was there. Everything was there. Those who read the book of Daniel, they knew who, when this time came, the son of man will die. Remember, Daniel said, in the midst of the week, the, the, the anointed one will be what? Cut off. Remember that? He'll be cut off. Verse 24. Think chapter 9, verse 24 and 25. 
So when the Holy Spirit was descending, Christ was glorified in heaven that he has completed the work of salvation. As he's glorified in heaven, the church is started on earth. Ah, you're, you're missing it. When Christ is glorified in heaven, as a king of kings and a lord of lords, does he have completed the work of salvation? As, as he's glorified, the church begins on earth. The Holy Spirit descended and the church was founded. The Christian church. After that, Peter goes and preached. 3,000 people were baptized. The church started on earth. The feast of the weeks. Why? Because the feast of the week, they have now harvested. They are coming to celebrate. So, heaven harvested 3,000 of Christians as the Holy Spirit went down on the feast of the weeks. Are you following? So it got fulfilled. In the time, in the antitype, it's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In the type is the feast of bringing the harvest. Are you following? What's the next feast? The feast of what? The feast of the trumpets. In Israel, there were two types of trumpet. The one that's made of steel, the one that is made of what? The horns. Of, of, of the rams. I'll see together. So, so, so here the feast of the trumpet, they will blow the shofar. It's called the shofar, the, 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 the trumpet made of the horns of the ram. And when those trumpets are blown, or oh, oh, let me say, Israel life, all of it, it was punctuated with trumpets. Trumpets were very important in Israel. When the month ends, people will know it's month end, they will blow the trumpet. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, when there was a meeting, they will blow trumpets. When there was war, want to give a warning, they will blow the trumpet. Hallelujah. Those who are reading their Bible who've got smart Bible like mine. I think it will be Psalm 119, the longest psalm in the Bible. You see, sometimes you see the word seller. Seller. When you see that seller, it was the blowing of the trumpet. So when the person will be reciting or saying the psalm or singing the psalm, where it says seller, it will be the trumpet. Boop, 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 the stanza has ended. Goes to another stanza. Boop, 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 seller. You, when you see that seller in your Bible, it suggests that it, this, this, see, again, this hymn, this is the first stanza, this is the second stanza, this is the fifth stanza. Hello? We are learning, eh? Yeah. I got it with a fee, you are getting it for free. <laughs> Amen? At least you are laughing. Eyes break. So, what we are saying, you hurry. So, the life of Israel was punctuated with what? Trumpets. So, why the feast of the trumpets? When you read here in the Bible, it will tell that the feast of the trumpet, it will happen 10 days before the feast of the atonement. It's very important, those 10 days. 10 days before the feast of atonement, it was the feast of the trumpet. I will follow it. Why? Those, they will blow the trumpet to prepare people for the day of atonement. Because the day of atonement is a judgment day. The day of atonement, it was a day where the nation must be cleansed. So 10 days before the day of atonement, or the feast of atonement, there must be a feast of trumpets blown all over to remind people to remove Everything that is dirty in your camp because in 10 days time is a judgment day. I will follow it. They will remove everything so that they are ready for the day of atonement. Take out living in their homes. Remove everything that was defiled and be ready to celebrate 
or to go and honor the atonement. Okay, that is the what? Type. I'll see together. Let's come to the anti-type. Those who've done history, Babun Konto is here as our veteran. In the history of this world, there was a time they're calling it the Great Awakening. You still remember the Great Awakening? Let me see those who remember it. Masawata are no longer doing history. <laughs> the Great Awakening, it happened around the 1700 and the 1800. Its peak reached when the Middle Rights Movement preaching the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hello? Are you following? Go and read history. The Great Awakening started around 1700 and it reached its peak around Boma 1844 when the Millerite movement started preaching that Jesus is coming. Hello? Right. Why? It was a form of blowing the trumpet preparing the people for the investigative judgment that happened in 1844. I'm alone in this one. Are you following? Let me repeat myself. The feast of the trumpet, it will happen 10 days before which feast? Before which feast? Before the Feast of Atonement. So, so the great awakening in history, 1700, 1800, when, 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 when the Europe and America, after Reformation, people started preaching Christ, and the missionaries leaving Europe, leaving America, coming to the shores of Africa in the form of missionaries, in quotes, bringing the gospel to us, in quotes bringing the gospel to us. That was a great awakening. That was the blowing of the trumpet, preparing the people of God for the judgment, for the investigative judgment that started in 1844. So the feast of the, the trumpet got fulfilled around the period of the great awakening. That's the time. It happened during our time. Hello? Are you lost or you are with me? Yes. And after, then comes the Feast of what? Atonement. And the Feast of the Atonement was a very big day. Everyone will know which A on this day. It's a serious day. You know atonement, isn't it? Ah, that one you excel as Adventist. A day of atonement, read about it. Leviticus 16, it gives details. It says on that day is a day of what? Of judgment. God will come. The cleansing of the sanctuary. On that day, uh, I like it. I wish I was doing sanctuary elder Dodov. On that day, on the day of atonement, you will remove everything. Actually, people will have removed only 10 days before. On that day, all the congregation of Israel, they come and camp by the sanctuary, by the door of the sanctuary. The high priest now is going to the most holy place to do what? Atonement for the one for the nation. Let me hammer here. On the day of atonement, if you were wearing two centimeters, it goes. On the day of atonement, during the week of the ham, after the feast of the trumpet, or day of atonement, on the day of atonement, because it was a judgment day, the earrings were removed, makeup were removed, people were clean. Clean. Why? Because it was a judgment day. Because their case were pending. The, holy, the, the, the high priest was going to the most holy place to plead for the nation. So they were supposed to what? To be clean as the high priest enters the most 
holy place to cleanse the sanctuary of the sins of the whole year. Ah, uh, you don't hear me. When you read in Leviticus 16, he says, on that day, you must afflict yourself. Remember that word. You must what? What is to afflict? What is to afflict? I must stay for some few minutes here. It's very important. What is to afflict? I could man was alive. Huh? We could one. What is to afflict? To be sorrowful. To be sorrowful. What is to af- Yes, my brother. Introspection. Examine yourself. When you read another version, it says it says deny yourself. To afflict is to what? Deny yourself. Let me make an example of affliction. No <laughs> total. Yes. To afflict yourself, it's it means that you love this thing. You love ice cream, ne? You love what? Ice cream, but you realize which you know in a flu. Then you deny yourself. Yeah. You afflict yourself. That's that's I'm trying to explain it. Eh? Yeah? You you love this thing, but the circumstances around you don't allow you to you know to partake. Then you want it, but then you deny yourself. That's what affliction means. So in the day of atonement, the nation was supposed to do what? To to afflict themselves. You you like this person, but because it's a day of atonement, you afflict yourself. We are trying to keep our monthly age, but it's a day of atonement. You what? Afflict yourself. We could just have a show. Pile our heart, but we age right away. Wabata, 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 wabata. No poo, kalabata, everything. It's bata, bata, hukula. You afflict yourself. So on the day of atonement, you are supposed to afflict yourself because the priest is going to the most holy place to plead for the case of the nation. I wish I had time to explain. And as, as the high priest enters into the most holy place, there was the duty of the congregation of Israel. The duty was to pray that the work of the high priest is completed, that the high priest may be able to come out, that the high priest should not die in the most holy place. Hello? So, what are we saying? What is the type? The anti-type? I was giving you the what? The type. So, I'm giving you what now? The anti-type. As the Seventh-day Adventists, we believe that 22 October, 1844, 1844 years ago, 1844, yeah, you are not alone in Vienna. I'm pleased that you are here. So 1844, 22 October, what happened? What happened? The great disappointment. Yes, Jesus entered in the most holy place. Amen. In heaven, the sanctuary. It means that he started the work of atonement, 1844, up to today, 170 years ago. It means that we are in an atonement era now. Era now. As, as I'm making noise, we are living in an atonement era. The high priest is in the most holy place. We should be denying ourselves. It's not a normal time. We are living in a borrowed time. So remove, remove everything. Remove everything. Deny yourself. You want to do it. But time. It says no. 
He's in the most holy place. You can't. Can I come closer? We don't eat meat. On the day of atonement, meat is nice. Nando's is nice. Rocco Mama is nice. Whatever is nice. But we deny ourselves. Because the high priest is the most holy place. So the health reform message and the health reform message is based on the time that we are living in. There's nothing to do with the day, mother wife. No, no, no. We are living in an atonement era. The priest is in the most holy place. We cannot do things anyhow. We can't sing anyhow. We can't dress anyhow. We can't eat anyhow. We can't talk anyhow. We should be praying, afflicting ourselves that the high priest may finish his work in the most holy place. So the feast of atonement, God is fulfillment on 1844, 22 October. Up until now. What's the, the feast? That is the last one. The feast of the tabernacle. When you really said you shall celebrate the feast of the tabernacle for, for seven days, eh? What, what will happen? What, what will happen on the feast of the tabernacle? They will all come. It's a feast that closes the year. They will all come to celebrate. Build their booth. That's the one about Kimu Kitwami Tahan. Yes. That's the last feast. It's the feast of the tabernacle. Mohokopana. It's the only feast that has never been fulfilled. Will be fulfilled when Jesus comes. That's the last feast of Israel. All the six ones have been fulfilled. The last one that has not been fulfilled is the feast of the booth of the tabernacle. That's why even today we're still celebrating the camp meeting. Because we are still celebrating it. It's the feast that has never been fulfilled. But when Christ, the antitype, comes, it will be the culmination of everything to go and celebrate the goodness of the Lord. It's an in gathering. He says in Psalm, he will send his angels to go and gather the saints. So the only feast that has remained, was alone, is the feast of the tabernacle. All have been fulfilled. There's only one feast, the feast of the tabernacle. So what am I saying to the church before I close, I give you chances that the roadmap of salvation, God had allowed, outlined it. It's up to us to follow it. Because everything is clear in his word. So I'll, I'll sit down with this note. I will say, Adventists, we are not the Pentecostals. We are not the Methodists. We are not. We are not the Catholics. We are the Seventh Day Adventists. And the Seventh Day Adventists do things differently. Why? Because we understand the time that we are living in. He's in the most holy place. Ellen White says to in the book Selected Messages, book. Two. She says, Christ many a times in the most holy place. He sometimes leaves and look on earth and he finds that we are not ready. And he goes back to the Father and pleads on our behalf. He comes again and he looks. We are not ready. He goes back to the Father and pleads on our behalf. The Bakure demon. About, they, have not, they have not denied themselves, Father. It, she says, one day he will want to go back and he will find there's a smoke in the hole. Then he will be forced to come down. He will be forced to come down. Revelation chapter 15, when you read it, it says, then there was a smoke. And when there was a smoke, then the seven last plagues were pulled on earth. So immediately when the, the work of atonement is done, then we are getting the close of probation, we are getting into the last seven plagues. 
So I want to say to, to us as seven day Adventists, especially, you are a church of tomorrow. Actually, you are a church today. You are Adventists. Know these things. And behave like Adventists. We can't. We can't be struggling with things that other people are struggling. Let's have different struggles. We are Adventists. We know, we know the time that we are living in. We don't, don't come and sing anyhow in front and do things anyhow. We are Adventists. So I want to say to all of us, as, I, as I'm closing, my time is it's over. These are the seven feasts of Israel, or of God, that were the map line of the road to redemption. I'm done. Any question of clarity or comment? Thanks, Maruti, for the powerful and wonderful solution. Okay, yeah, but, but he must come. Thanks, Muruti. Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to sort of take you back because you've already reached the apex of your presentation. Uh, okay. Powerful stuff. My question is on Muruti, the, the feast of the first fruits. Yes. Um, when I look around here, we've got more young people. Some of them soon will be employed. Some will be having their own businesses. So I believe they are asking themselves, what does that mean now for us? Am I allowed to take the first fruits, the very first salary to the church? Um, are the first fruits also abolished, Muruti? What does it mean to us? And how do you link, how do you balance the first fruits and the tithe also? So here are some young people, they were about to give their first salary as the first fruit to the church. And now they are saying, thank you Muruti, it is abolished, now I'm going to keep it. So how do you balance that Muruti, the, the feast of the first fruit? Can you answer this one? I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Elder, for, for, for that powerful question. This is Golden West, isn't it? Yes, it's Golden West, my district. He's empowered. He knows the answer. But he wants his pastor to earn. Okay, this is... Uh, okay. In the olden days, in the time, the people will bring their first fruits to the tabernacle. Are we following? And what are the first fruits? First fruits were those uh, products or produce that arrived before the actual time of reaping. So they will take a portion and bring them to the tabernacle for the service of the tabernacle. So that everything, that, so that, like Malachi speaks, said, so that there may be food in my house. I will follow it. So now, in the time, in the time, or in the anti-type, to address question now, we are no longer have fields. Angeti. Nista Laguma estate. The only thing that you have is a lawn that is green that cannot produce any fruit. But you are getting your wage and your salary. So in that salary, God says the portion of it, the 10% becomes the first fruit. The tree of life in the garden, in those garden, it represented the first fruit, the tithe. That's why it was not supposed to, to, to be tempered with. So in all the history of humanity, God is requiring from humanity a form of sacrifice. You must tithe. Thank you. Young people, you must tithe. Yes, brother, make it so. They said I should make it. Bazalwani, uh, even, if, that is true, even if you get that first salary, you, you attended uh, 2011 uh, interviews, then finally you got it. You got that. Don't mind to bring it. There's nothing wrong with that. 
There's nothing wrong with that. Barcelona, life is the greatest gift ever. But now when you've got life and you've got a job, you are blessed. You are more than blessed. So, young people, please, bring your tithe and offering. But I will say this. I, I said it in another stewardship presentation. I said, some of us, we are very faithful in unfaithfulness. Can I explain it? Very faithful in unfaithfulness. That thing you are bringing and say it's a tithe, when we can zoom and come closer, you will find it's not even half of your tithe. You are just bringing it so that so the issue of tithe and offering is very important. It's viewed as the first fruits. Rest Noted. Okay, I'm done. Any comment? I'm closing. If you want to see me, uh, yes. You've got other questions. You want to see me in camera and bring your tithe to me? Let's meet. Uh, let's meet uh, and we talk about this thing. I am praying. I am praying. But when to say I send down song. See a bullet at the way to the old two was Pelola. Look at the way to Sicilia Lizulaco. See the good tip to Ufuna and Booty. Sing about to Quelle Pagat. By way to Pagabe Gucona Passi, Quarter Corner. As a sense a representation in Lumi Segetica. Where Nanga Penny Zulu. We end the correction. Never Help us not to behave anyhow. Help us to deny ourselves. Yes, we crave for those things. We want to do them. But restrain us. Help us not to do them anymore. For in soon and very soon you shall say it is done. You will leave the most holy place and come down. May we find us ready as you come. Bless each and everyone who made it here. And we know that they are not here by mistake. It's because heaven has planned that they are here. Let them not leave the same as they came. For Heavenly Father, they cannot come closer to you and remain the same. Thank you. Bless all that shall, program that shall follow now. In Jesus' name, Amen.